Louis William Tomlinson, born on December 24, 1991, is a British singer and songwriter from Doncaster, England, where he was raised among four younger sisters. Louis' love for music and performing began with appearances in several school music productions, most notably as Danny Zuko in Greece, simultaneously performing as the lead vocalist in a local band called The Rogue. After being kicked from the band, Louis became motivated to audition for the hit singing competition show The X Factor UK in 2009, where he would fail to make it past the producer's auditions, only to return a year later in 2010. Here, he would make it to the boot camp round with a rendition of Hey There Delilah by the Plain White Tees, going on to be put in a five-man boy band later dubbed One Direction. Louis' experience in One Direction would later set him up to break records and sell out world tours as a solo artist, yet he's still underestimated. So let's dive into Louis' career and explore why he deserves better from the fans themselves. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are nice and settled in because we are gonna be here for a while today talking about Louis Tomlinson. My favorite topic of conversation of all time, you know. You guys know that I'm a Louis before a human being, so this is probably the most important and meaningful video that I've ever worked on. I just feel so extremely passionately about Louis deserving to be more mainstream and stressing to the public or like the general public that he is so beyond loved and successful and has just created so many amazing things in his time in the spotlight. So today we're going to be taking a look at his career, his accomplishments, his talents, why people love him, his hardships, things that he's gotten over, just like literally every single thing about Louis Tomlinson. This is essentially just like a big humongous look at everything that he's done, including his impact that he's had on other people. Whether you're already a diehard Louis Tomlinson fan or you're just curious, this is for you. Oh my goodness, I could go on for literally centuries about Louis in One Direction. The heart and soul of that band, I don't give a fuck. In the beginning of Louis' time in One Direction, he was branded as this super like loud, in your face, class clown, comic relief type of character. If there was a single funny moment happening on screen, Louis was there. Louis was the culprit. Louis was creating it. Pranks, sarcasm, the outbursts from day one, like video diary on the stairs, number one, Louis was the one like creating these moments and fueling them. So I mean, obviously I think this is something that really made him stand out and like really created something for him. He was so easily identifiable in this thing. Like, oh, the goofy funny one. Oh, the comic relief. That one, that member of the band, I know Louis. Like he just stood out so much because of this big personality. But I personally feel like a lot of people get so lost in that big personality and that identity for him that we tend to forget that he was so so much more in One Direction than that. Not only was he this class clown comic relief type of person, but he was also just like wildly, wildly supportive of his other bandmates, wildly supportive and protective of not only them, but also the boys' fans. He was the family man of the group. There's so many interviews where they talk about how close he is to his mom and his sisters and that kind of family man persona also came off in the band as well even though Liam was the one who was branded as like this daddy direction character Louis was like an older brother and even though he was like over the top and sarcastic he never came off as mean or like bitchy he was just playful and very very full of life wow I feel like I'm talking about him like he's dead right now I just like, this is not his funeral girl. <laughs> Ren V says, It was so easy for me to pick Louis as my favorite member of One Direction all throughout the band. Like, he changed a bit as he grew up, but would never change was my love for him. He always had the same heart and quick wit and stunning vocals. One Direction Louis is so easy to love. And then Michaela P said, I think Louis seemed larger than life in One Direction. He added so much personality and leadership, and I wish people understood how diehard Louis girls were him. Rightfully so. And I think all these things that people love about Louis, like, I agree with the quote, he felt larger than life in One Direction, and I feel like that kind of overshadowed his lack of musical involvement a little bit. Damn, that got dark so fast. I love Louis, he's so sweet, darkness and despair. But I think it is really well known that Louis was really underestimated in One Direction, especially in those very early days. He talked about this in his documentary, All Those Voices. He said, there was an element of me feeling that it doesn't matter what I do. I'm not really in control here and I don't see where I fit within this band. And it's like the fandom definitely noticed at the time there was all kinds of like rallying and conversation always happening about Louis's lack of musical involvement in the band and it's not something that he talked about back then you know what I mean it, it wasn't like he was giving interviews while he was in One Direction
reaction being like, oh, I don't feel like I belong here. This is all stuff that has come out later. And now we know that's how he felt back then. But there was fans that were seeing him back then, regardless of him talking about it or not talking about it. I think there was such an anger with Louis getting less attention, especially in the solo department, because his voice is so unique and beautiful. And I think a lot of people realized that from really early on and couldn't comprehend why other people working with them couldn't see that. I think Louis' voice has always been so unique and he does things with his voice that other artists can only dream of trying. One of my favorite things ever is listening to vocal professionals like analyze Louis' voice and talk about it because these vocal professionals know what they're talking about and they will tell it like it is every single time. You don't call Billie Eilish's voice thin, all right? You don't call um, Sabrina Carpenter's voice thin, all right? You don't, you know, they don't, they're delicate. They can't do the same thing Adele does. They can't do the same thing Olivia Rodrigo does. It's delicate. Louis Tomlinson can't do what Zane does. He can't do what Harry does. He can't do what Louis Capaldi does, but it's, they can't do what he does. You know what I mean? They, he can't, they can't bring the same intimacy that Louis can. That's why you need Louis in these parts. Something Great would not be the same song that it is if anyone else did the outro but Louis. Mm, oh, wow. This guy can sing. Holy, how have I never heard this guy before? I'm freaking blown away right now. I, I'm sorry. I didn't look at one uh, visual piece. I was way too concentrated on his voice. I got to give it up to Louis in this album. So far overall, I feel like he's been really stand out on so many of these tracks. My understanding is he had a lot of um, the writing process of this. You guys got to let me know if that's right, but I'm pretty sure you guys have told me that before. And I love to hear him in some of these because he brings such a like nostalgic element to me because I love like Brit pop and I love a lot of those like rock sounds. And when, <clears throat> when Louie comes in and he brings that, I feel like it just changes up a song a little bit for me. I really look forward to hearing what he's going to do. Is it going to be a high note? Is it going to do a raspy vocal? And I feel like I got to hear some really beautiful moments from him. There. It's just such a shame that nobody on their team ever pointed that out and kind of let him shine in that way. But he does add something so special to One Direction songs. They would sound so different without him. I see people talking about this on Twitter all the time. <laughs> I love this video of One Direction performing live and Louis like losing his mic during Rock Me. So like Liam tried to fill in and do his solo. And it's just so glaringly apparent that it's so different and just does not sound right. It's like... Land. Like, I'm sorry, Louis carried and I shrug. And like I said, it's a shame that they didn't use his voice to their advantage too because of how popular Louis was in One Direction. Louis girls were present during One Direction's time as a band. Louis girls were so fierce and loyal and utterly, utterly die hard for Louis in a way that it just wasn't for other members. Or I should say we, I say they, we. I was one of these die hard Louis girls like doing the damn thing for him all the time. And I personally think that this is because Louis has always been such an underdog, but the people that really saw him really saw him. There's something really special about peeling back the layers of Louis's like One Direction persona and his place in the band and his lack of seeing time and just like really seeing what's there, really seeing what there is to him and just like fully admiring him for that. This talented person who is just so down to earth, so giving and passionate and funny and sexy I'll say it, like he's sexy, he was sexy in One Direction, he's always been hot. Um, Just so like any other person and like really giving him a chance. I think that's why there's something so incredibly special about Louis Girls and Louis because they were the ones really, really seeing him and being like, fuck, I love him and he so deserved that. I think that's partly what helped Louis really like push himself in One Direction and find his place because he did end up being the member of One Direction with like the most notable writing credit and he just went on to build this massive career that proved every single Louis girl right. So I just really mean it when I say that Louis was like the whole heart and soul of One Direction. Like I cannot imagine that band without him. And it's like the other four members of One Direction love that man to death. They all loved him so much. It feels like almost every half of like the best One Direction friendships include Louis because he was just so close to all of them at one point individually and they all just love him so much. So 
I rest my case. She's been up all night. <laughs> So we all know that One Direction began their planned hiatus around 2016. That's when everything was like kind of done and we kind of went into this drought, if you will. I talked about in my review of all of those voices that Louis wasn't ready for the end of One Direction and how jarring and difficult that was for him. He said, even right up until we went on the break, there was still really no closure on that idea. You didn't really, or at least I didn't, understand what it was going to be. I think the feeling I remember the most is a little bit of anger because I didn't want to go on break. It didn't just upset me, it shocked me. I wasn't prepared for it. I thought for me, it was the band or nothing. I wanted to stay in the band, but that wasn't an option anymore. For a while at the very beginning, I don't know if you guys were there or if you remember this, but for a while at the very beginning, there was like a lot of uncertainty in the public of if Louis would even go on and have a solo career. And we learned in all of those voices that that's not even something that he saw for himself. Like that quote just said for him, it was the band or nothing. Like he really couldn't see himself continuing music. Even more so after the passing of his mother in 2016. Because it was like, at that time, Louis was grieving the loss of One Direction and then also grieving the loss of his mom. So there was just a lot of hard stuff going on at the time and the public was kind of in this mindset. I remember being in the fandom and being like, it's so okay if he doesn't go on to release music. Everyone was kind of at this agreement where it was like, I get it. But he did. Spoiler. He did. He did release his debut solo single at the end of 2016 after kind of a year off. It's called Just Hold On and it was done alongside of Steve Aoki who is a pretty popular DJ and producer. Louis managed to get up and perform the song live on the X Factor just shortly after his mom's passing was announced. I imagine that's the hardest thing he's ever had to like get up and pull off but he did it and I remember this time so vividly just like the outpouring of support and how proud everyone was of him for like portraying a message like that even in the darkest times of his life and I think this is partly why the documentary all those voices was so good especially for people who just like don't know things about Louis because it explored all of these things that were kind of stacked against him like not knowing his place in One Direction and then finally finding that place and then losing One Direction and not not knowing how to start a solo career, losing his mom, and just like all these odds against him. It just let him tell his story in his own words and kind of explored all of these things that were going wrong. And that's like what the whole core of the beginning was supposed to be about. And I do think it's a really sad thought that he could have just given up on music. But the fact that he didn't just says a lot to me about what he's really passionate about. Just Hold On debuted at number two on the UK charts and number one on the US Billboard charts for electronic songs. It was praised by critics for being an undeniably catchy track, a surprisingly gentle mix of Aoki's EDM backing and Tomlinson's melodic vocals. Critics were really praising like the positive uplifting message behind Just Hold On, but were also like really surprised that this is the route that he decided to take. I think a lot of people also really loved Louis and Steve Aoki together for that time that they were doing promo together they got along just really great they had great chemistry the way they interacted with each other was just like entertainment and they're still friends to this day people love seeing them together i love seeing them together now this chunk of time that we're talking about right now is sort of louis's very first era like there was never an album release but it technically is his pre-debut album era so it does count as like the first little bit of things that he was doing you know what i mean okay he was just sort of releasing singles in this time after Just Hold On, the second single he released was called Back To You, released in July of 2017, featuring BB Rexa, pop singer. It was also done by another DJ called Digital Farm Animals, but nobody talks about him. Like, nobody talks about him. It's all about Louie and BB. <laughs> It's interesting because this song, Back to You, was released under Louis' own record label called 78 Productions. Yeah, did you know about this? Did you know about this? I probably have a lot of diehard Louis watching this, so you probably knew about this. So 78 Productions Limited was registered to Louis back in 2015 when he was also following a bunch of like unsigned talent on Twitter. I feel like Louis going into like the business side of music was not a career move that was completely unexpected. He even guest judged along Simon Cowell on America's Got Talent in 2016. So it's like, this isn't coming out of nowhere. But yeah, all of Louis' music since then has been released with 78 Productions Limited. I don't think anything else has been done with the label, but it's really nice that he set that up for himself early because now 78 Productions Limited like owns his music, aka he owns his music. Mm. 
sexy ass. Anyway, anyway, anyway. In this chunk of time, though, Louis did sign to Epic Records under Psycho Music, making him the only member of One Direction to return to Simon's label. Simon is notorious in the One Direction fandom and other fandoms for, like, sabotaging and mistreating clients. That's very surface level stuff that I'm talking about here. It goes so much deeper. More on that in my Psycho Music video that I did on the fall of the record label. So if you want to check that out after this video, go check it out. It will explain all about why people were not excited that Louis re-signed with Simon. Also more on Simon and Louis later in this video. Right now, back to back to you. Yes, anyway, second single, Back to You, in what we'll call the LT era. This is like pre-debut album era, LT. He even had his little LT symbol with the LT period symbol in this time and everything. It was like, oh my God, what a time. Back to You, though, hit the top 10 in the UK and top 40 in the US and went triple platinum in multiple countries. It also won a People's Choice Award for Pop Song That Ruled 2017. Hello, I feel like I forgot about this. Louis was doing the damn thing when he was releasing his singles, like, I'm personally a really big Back To You girl. It's one of my favorite singles that he's released. I love her so much. Imagine my complete and utter shock when he put it on his set list this year and turned it into a rock version. I fell to my knees. I fell to my knees. I did. A couple months after Back To You came out, we got our next single called Just Like You. It released in October of 2017. Just Like You, I feel like is still pretty special and it was at the time too. Louis called it very autobiographical. The fans have seen so much and got to know us so well, but I've never really had a chance to be honest like that with music. So that was really refreshing. It was just important for me to write a song that could humanize me as much as possible and that the fans could really feel like I'm just like them honest and vulnerable and real. Louis also released a really cool lyric video for Just Like You that contained themes of politics, mental health, feminism, diversity, LGBTQ plus rights, the Black Lives Matter movement, and the Me Too movement. It was just incredible. So widely talked about, so widely covered, and still loved by so many people today. I feel like putting those themes in the Just Like You lyric video just say so much about him and what he cares about. Around two months after Just Like You came our next single in in the LT era called Miss You. It was released in December of 2017 and hit the top 10 in several countries. A lot of critics really loved Miss You and commented that it sounded really like akin to stuff that Louis wrote for the Midnight Memories album for One Direction. Louis got to perform Miss You live at the finale of The X Factor and Miss You is a lot of people's like favorite LT era single and a lot of people like these days beg him to bring it back because it was so popular. I do unfortunately think that Louis is a miss you hater these days <laughs> he has commented before that he's like grown from the miss you era but i feel like if back to you gets a rock version we should really have a conversation about miss you rock version but that pretty much closes out the lt era and as a little look at what louis was up to in the beginning of his solo career in 2017 i think this short chunk of time for him is really special and can sometimes kind of get lost in the louis tomlinson lore just because it was like the first thing he's ever did and he's grown so much since then that people just forget about her mostly because he's evolved sonically and stylistically so so much from that era and we know that he prefers like what he's doing now so much more i think that's kind of why it gets lost but it was the beginning of it all it was the beginning of everything for him it was him like picking up and proving everyone wrong about his ability to go on and make solo music and kind of proving himself wrong too about being able to have this solo career and he he was doing the damn thing in 2017 like I didn't realize until I looked back for this video that all of these singles were performing so well and Louis even appeared on the Debrett's 2017 list of the most influential people in the UK he was doing the damn thing. Louis also did some really fun and creative interviews and promo in this time that I really love. If you haven't seen Louis's old promo stuff from like 2017, 2018, go watch those interviews. They're so... We love and respect his haircut at this time too. I'm a big Peaky Blinders haircut girl. I just think so many things about the LT era, so nostalgic and like I said, just the beginning of everything. So fun. One of you guys actually said, the LT era is so underrated. I miss it a lot when he was releasing those singles and doing a lot of promo it was nice to see him moving in the right direction and i loved his style at the time the graphics were cool too i'm really gonna miss the og louis tomlinson logos so true 
A lot of people were also pestering Louis about releasing his debut solo album in this era, of course, and Louis would continue making comments to fans that it was coming and that he was working on it. But that is not true because he stopped doing music for a while in this time to appear as a judge on the X Factor UK. I do want to stress that in this video I keep saying like, oh, Louis said his album was coming and it's not. But I don't want it to seem like it was his fault or that he was doing it on purpose or maliciously. There was a lot of conversation in this time about his team holding him back and setting him back and him not being able to release the album because of all these obstacles that kept setting him back. He was working on his solo album. I remember getting a snippet of Always You really, really early on before Walls was even thought of. Like he was working on it and was preparing for it. It wasn't like he was lying. I just want to make that clear. Not a guest judge. No, he was a judge on the very show that kicked off his whole career, mentoring the boys category. Do I even need to say that Louis was an amazing judge and mentor on The X Factor? He was compassionate and thoughtful and really cared about his contestants. He went out of his way to make contestants feel worthy and celebrated. He was out in the back of the studio almost every night after tapings to meet fans and give fans the chance to see him. He didn't have to do that, but he always did. And that's the thing too, like the fans were still there. The fans were very, very much present. It's like, oh, Louis not releasing music anymore. Let's dip and focus on something else. No, absolutely not. All his fan accounts on Twitter were still there, still very active and present, live tweeting his episodes of The X Factor every time they were on, all the way up into the finale, tweeting their support, meeting him outside. They were still there. We were still there. Louis ended up winning his season of The X Factor with contestant Dalton Harris, once again proving himself. Louis was the first person to ever appear on the show as a contestant and then come back and win as a mentor. And I just feel like Louis as a judge in The X Factor is really interesting considering all the things we know about him liking the behind the scenes stuff in music. This is like a little side tangent that I need to go on for a second before we get back into the musical like career timeline. So we talked about Louis having a company that releases his music called 78 Productions Limited. He also had a company called Triple Strings LTD. He launched the venture alongside a music lawyer named Michael Smith, who was a lawyer with Sony. And why is Triple Strings such a sexy name for a record label? Louis Tomlinson, Triple Strings CEO. Did you hear that? It was me falling to my knees once again. <laughs> Yeah, but about the company, Lou is quoted in this time saying that giving new artists a platform is just an incredible feeling for him. So I feel like given how much he cares about like giving voices to small artists, it just makes so much sense that he would, you know, like judge on the X Factor and have these like companies where he can sign talent. And he also tweeted this in 2021. So I've decided to put it out there in the world today. I'm going to start my own music management company to help develop new artists. Watch this space. Once again, so just like unsurprising that he's into the business side of music I feel like he's just so well suited for that kind of thing and I feel like management and like label stuff really is so important to him because of his own experiences that he's had in the industry and he just wants to pave the way for a better industry that actually gives small artists a voice he's just such a great artist and writer and mentor I think everything about it is so great for him and I personally am rooting for him to like dive way deeper into that kind of stuff when he feels like he has the time or when he's a little bit more finished with making his own music or both at the same time I'm not complaining. So after Louis was finished judging on The X Factor, he went back to releasing singles. The first one was called Two of Us and it came out in March of 2019. Two of Us is probably, not probably, Two of Us is definitely like one of the most personal songs that Louis has released to date. It's a very vulnerable ballad about losing his mother and how he will go on and be the best of him for her. Y'all want to see me listening to Two of Us for the first time? and just like we started you and me and no one else he was her first kid am i okay this period of time was really interesting for louis because we kind of got back into this cycle of louis releasing music and then telling the public that his album is coming soon but nobody really knew when soon was the phrase soon is getting sooner kind of became like a meme or like a joke around the fandom because he just kept saying soon and nobody really knew like what was to come of that 
we had like radio silence from March to September when it comes to music. It was like he gave us two of us and then it was like six months of nothing. <laughs> Imagine being there. <laughs> the stress. And then he dropped what would go on to be like a main single for his debut album called Kill My Mind. Kill My Mind came out in early September of 2019 and she's kind of revolutionary. Um, Kill My Mind was Louis' first single that kind of shifted into more of a rock sound that would go on to shape the way his music sounds. Kill My Mind is sort of credited with being like the beginning of everything. Like I cannot stress how important Kill My Mind is as a single. Like if you've never heard Louis's music go listen to all of his lt singles like pre-wall singles and then listen to kill my mind and tell me the difference like it's crazy Louis has talked about this several times at this point how like kill my mind kind of helped him shift into the kind of music he really wants to make he cited kill my mind as his favorite song from this era many times sarah g says kill my mind was crazy at the time and so different from anything else he had released i wish to this day my reaction to this was on camera it felt like a huge aha moment for Louis, and i'm glad it got released as a single i think Louis will always be really proud of kill my mind and it will be remembered as the beginning of something different Louis also released a music video for Kill My Mind. He's released music videos for every single that he released. I just haven't talked about them until now because they didn't have much relevance until now. But the Kill My Mind introduced us to a storyline that Louis would later take throughout all the music videos from this era, which is really cool. It featured scenes of a couple that we would end up seeing again. Hmm. This music video was also really cool because Louis invited fans that lived in the area to come and like be a part of it and they ended up like making up the crowd of a concert that you would see in the music video. You'll see he's always including fans where he can and it's so cute. I literally love him for that so much and I just remember all the excitement and joy of that time when his team was like looking for people to come and be a part of the music video. I think that's the coolest thing ever. After releasing and promoting Kill My Mind, Louis did a headlining set at the Coca-Cola Fest in Spain. Spain. This was Louis' first time playing a festival and it was like a really big and exciting deal at the time. He ended up playing a bunch of songs off of his debut album that nobody knew and the whole fandom kind of got to watch him debut these songs like on a live stream at this festival. I remember, oh my god, this day. <laughs> If you used to watch my videos in this time, you know, girl, like, oh my god, what a day. This time was just so wildly exciting because we had all been waiting for so long for like a scrap of something like from the album. He was releasing all these singles, but then all of a sudden there was all these songs that he performed at the festival that we had never heard before. And it was like, okay, this is a real thing. Like his album is going to come out. It just like felt like this finally moment. Like this is proof that he has stuff and the album is going to come and this is real and this is concrete. So it was just such an exciting day. A month after this festival in October, Louis would release another single from his debut album called We Made It. The music video for We Made It portrayed the same couple I was talking about from the Kill My Mind music video, overcoming obstacles in their relationship. Louis was quoted saying that the We Made It music video was supposed to be a little bit more cinematic than the Kill My Mind one. He performed the single We Made It on the Late Late Show with James Corden and got to sit down for an interview with him. Anyway, on October 12th, a magazine released claiming Louis' debut album was called Walls and that it would be out in January 2020. We, however, didn't get an official album announcement until around a week later when Louis would do an interactive kind of thing where fans would get pieces of the album cover and you would have to put them together like a puzzle to make the cover. And then we got the official announcement that way. And we got the release date of January 31st, 2020. I think that this moment was just life-changing. We had been waiting since like 2016, 2017 for some kind of a debut album. And there was times in there where we thought we weren't getting it. But then all of a sudden there it was with an album cover, a title, a release date. Like it was there. Finally. Not only that, but Louis also ended up announcing world tour dates for the spring and summer of 2020, which would be his first ever solo world tour, so that was crazy. Later in November, Louis would release another single from Walls called Don't Let It Break Your Heart, which was one of the songs that he actually performed at the Co Festival back when nobody knew anything about Don't Let It Break Your Heart. The music video, of course, continues the storyline of the lovers from our past singles and follows them into criminal entanglement, actually, featuring Louis as their getaway driver. He also plays soccer, football, 
in this music video. We love to see it. Soccer has actually always been a huge part of Louis too and like the Louis Tomlinson lore. I didn't talk about this a lot throughout this video because it's not his musical career, but he's always played soccer or football, whatever. He did a bunch of charity matches when he was in One Direction. And he was also in like a deal with his hometown league, the Rovers, for a while too, so. In this period of time, during all the Walls Madness, Louis was doing a bunch of these listening parties where fans could come and hear the album early. I love a listening party. I'm so glad that he did this. I think this is such a great way for artists to connect with their fans and give them something to do. Like, if there's going to be any event for like an album release, a one night only, a listening party, I think those are amazing. I'm so glad he did that. Later in January, a live stream went up on Louis's YouTube channel where you could watch a humongous mural being painted, revealing his track list literally so unique like what a way to announce your track list also later in january after this louis announced the final single from the walls era which is called walls the title track walls is a great single it has one of my favorite music videos the imagery and symbolism is absolutely insane in that music video if you haven't seen the walls music video i definitely recommend but yeah, all of those singles that he released over time led up to the release of his debut solo album Walls in January 2020. What a time. You guys just had to be there. Obviously, Walls was super important and so highly anticipated. I remember release day just being so full of joy, like unadulterated joy. Walls ended up going number one in several countries and hit the top 10 in several others, including number four in the UK and number nine in the US. Ugh, making that top 10. I know that's right. Critics described the album as worth the wait, emotionally bold, wholesome. The writing was complimented and Louis was cited as a storyteller. I'd say some fan favorite songs on this album are Walls, Fearless, Always You, Defenseless, Only the Brave for sure. People forget some of Louis's best songs and lyrics are on Walls. He really established himself as a storyteller and such a creative on Walls, and I love those songs to death. Artists should evolve, of course, but Walls was a strong debut. I also think that people forget how different Walls and Faith in the Future are lyrically. Like, obviously, they're sonically really different, but I feel like Louis is so much more emotional and vulnerable on Walls, and the lyrics are much more, like I said, storytelling-esque and really in tune with his feelings. And the lyrics on Faith in the Future are still really great, but they're just so different, and I feel like we don't appreciate the rawness of Walls enough. I think the lead up to Walls was so much fun and so interactive, but there is nothing like finally having it. I feel like after the release of his second album, people moved on really quickly from Walls, but she will always be so special for so many reasons. So after all the promo madness of Walls, because there was a lot of stuff going on, like I said, leading up to and the day it was released, so much going on. But after all of that, Louis ended up announcing his very own music festival called Away From Home. It was set to be in August in London, featuring a bunch of smaller bands that Louis really loves and like really believes in introduce us to the snuts and thank god later he would end up announcing a second away from home festival because of the success of the first one this one to take place in spain and spoiler yes it was a success so there is another one set to be in italy this year actually very shortly away from actually i think it will have already been done when i upload this video so there was a third one this year in italy once again, with Louis showing interest in the business side of music, getting into talent scouting, like in order to pick people for these music festivals, not only that, but for his tour as well. The Louis Tomlinson World Tour finally kicked off in February of 2022, after it was originally scheduled to be in 2020. It had seven legs and 81 shows total. These shows featured smaller bands that Louis loves opening for him like he did during the Away From Home Festival. People ended up loving these bands, and now we see some of them with like bigger followings and people like going to see their shows because of Louis. Sunroom is a band that comes to mind. A lot of my friends who are Louis love Sunroom and like go to their shows now. In this time we were also introduced to Louis's photographer Joshua Holling who is absolutely amazing and so talented so kind. Love and respect Joshua so much. He was taking all the best pictures of Louis on tour and he did for this tour as well this year. I think tour was really special.
special because a lot of people know that touring was Louis's favorite part of being in One Direction and that like he couldn't wait to get back on the road. The people who came to these tour shows brought so much love with them. They did so many fan projects and held up cute signs and filled the room with pride flags. It became like such a safe space for people to connect with each other and bond by their love for Louis and show him love back after everything that he's been through. It was just an incredible amazing live way to support him and to show him how loved he is. People got to meet their best friends there. People made their best friends there. People camped all night in the freezing cold just to see him. I can't describe it any other way than special. Like damn I miss tour. <laughs> So right when Louis came towards the end of the Louis Tomlinson world tour, he announced the album cover title and track list for his second album, Faith of the Future. Angels sing like this album would be released independently through BMG, which he did announce back in 2021. Hearing Louis would now work with BMG and not Psycho was obviously a humongous deal. I kind of talked about this earlier. It was so celebrated when Louis left Psycho and I think that says a lot about his relationship relationship with the label and Simon. He had like old band members and people in his life tweeting him congrats for leaving the record label. And I think that just says so much about what they were doing to him. And I feel like people were really excited because this was like a chance for him to like get out there and do what he wants and like be celebrated and pushed out and promoted a lot more than he was before. So this new chapter just felt so much like a new beginning and LT2 was just like so important to Louis. And it all kicked off with that album announcement. We learned that this album aesthetic would be red and black and featured this really cool checkered print that we would see in other places besides just on the album like that really became a part of his thing i absolutely love the merch of the faith in the future era i think it looks so cool the designs that they decided to print for this merch sticking with the red black and white all of that stuff it just looks so cool and they did an amazing job but louis has always been really good with merch i didn't really talk about the merch in the walls era but it was also really good and i'm that's something that i've been happy with consistently throughout louis career is the merch that he's been putting out thank you good job keep doing it but yeah, when Faith in the Future was announced, I think everyone was really, really excited about the track list because everything on it just sounded so cool. Like, Silver Tongues, She is Beauty, We are World Class, like, they just sounded so interesting. The very first song we ever got from Faith in the Future is called Bigger Than Me. Not my choice for a lead single. Change should have been on there in her place. But that is literally the one thing I will ever criticize this man for. Like, the one decision where I'm like, mm, no. Everything else he does... Is perfect. Anyway, Louis got to go back on Late Late to perform Bigger Than Me and he also performed it on Good Morning America. The second sequel from Faith in the Future came out the following month in October and it's called Out of My System. Out of My System is like the kill my mind of Faith in the Future in the sense that Louis was like really showing off his sound and his personal style and like the kind of music that he wants to make kind of thing. Like I was talking about how revolutionary Kill My Mind was. And then Out of My System came out and it was like one step further, like, oh my God, he is doing rock. He even later described the lyrics as taking on the meaning of like him trying this genre and like getting it out of his system because he always knew that he wanted to do rock oriented music and it just suits him so well. The Out of My System music video also fits this vibe so well and kind of established more of that that grungy red theme that he was going with for Faith in the Future. And then Louis's last single for Faith in the Future is called Silver Tongues, released a few days before the album itself. Easily one of the best singles that he's released in his career so far. I was just in awe of Silver Tongues. Silver Tongues is just like one of those songs that is so perfect for like TikToks or like movies. It's just so like montage -y and nostalgic and summery and fun. Like, But then on November 11th, Faith in the Future was released and man, oh man. When I say masterpiece, when I say Please go watch my Faith in the Future album reaction if you haven't seen it after you finish this video. I think it just says everything. Like I end the video sobbing my eyes out. Not because it was sad, but because it was so overwhelmingly good. Like this album was just a humongous step up from Walls. Like I can't even exaggerate how much. And it just featured like the absolute best of Louis and what he's capable of. And it's scary because that might not even be the best of Louis and what he's capable of. I can't even imagine an LT3 right now. Like it's so beyond me because Faith in the Future was so good. Like one of my favorite albums of all time easily. Critics described Faith in the Future as electric and energetic, saying it feels much more right and assured than Walls. Faith in the Future also 
also hit number one on the UK charts, making it Louis' first number one, and just says so much about the direction of his career. He hit the top five in the US and was number one in like four other countries. And not even that, but the like Faith in the Future announcements and things that he had been posting were like triple the size and engagement as the Walls ones. Like I've seen all these comparisons on Twitter and stuff about his likes and stuff before in the Walls era and like now in the Faith in the Future era. And he's just grown so, so much. He also announced another world tour right before dropping Faith in the Future, which was just selling show after show. And he was playing like bigger venues than he was during Walls. Obviously as a fan, you want to see these things happening, right? Like the double the fan engagement and the double the audiences at the shows. But it's just so crazy when it does happen right in front of your eyes. In support of the Faith in the Future album release, Louis actually hosted two one night onlys. One was in London and the other one was in New York. And a one night only is basically when you go, like it says, it's not a tour, it's just one show for one night only in the city. You can come and hear the new album performed live. And he did two of those. He also did these Faith in the Future pop-up shops that were so cool. They were like all decorated and decked out in the Faith in the Future aesthetic. And then fans could go in and like buy merch and take pictures and just have this cool experience and he did a bunch of album signings like he did before with walls it was all just very busy so much going on and i love it when it's like that during an album i think an artist should be busy like that why am i doing this I just think giving fans opportunities to like interact with you and the stuff that you're putting out is really cool. So like I said, doing a pop-up shop, album signings, the one I'd only is like, I think it's absolutely amazing that he had all these things going on for Faith in the Future. And I want to see absolutely much more of that in his next couple eras. After the madness of Faith in the Future releasing, Louis ended up announcing his documentary movie called All of Those Voices. It came out in theaters on March 22nd, and I will never forget this day in my whole life, ever. Lives were changed. I know I said that at another point in this video, but again, lives were changed. Louis was really busy in this time attending premieres and meeting a bunch of fans and giving interviews about the movie. All Those Voices follows Louis from his journey ending in One Direction, facing loss, and starting his solo career. It's a very raw and authentic documentary exploring all his struggles and how he found his way to making music that's really suitable and like doing really well. It also explores like the fans and the dedication to him and the environment that he's created for them. A lot of his friends and family are in the documentary and they speak on his life and his career as well. And the whole experience was also just so much fun in general. I'm so glad that all those voices came out in movie theaters. I cannot stress that enough because it's such a different experience if it were to come out on like Netflix or Amazon or like a streaming service, whatever. It was just so much better to have it in the theater like it was because it created an experience. Like I said, so many people were like buying these like Louis movie theater t-shirts so we could all like match and like wear Louis merch into the theater and just like sit there and cry and scream and laugh and have a great time seeing our favorite person in the universe right there on the screen together. So I went so many times and so many people went so many times just for the experience to see that and to really soak it all in and it was so great. I'm always going to be so grateful that we got all of those voices. I just think Louis's career has been so exciting and so easy to love and want to follow since the beginning. I cannot wait to see what else he does because he only gets better and better and more in tune with himself it's so much fun to be a louis it's so special and like fangirls would love him if they gave him a chance which is like the point here i think one of the most important parts of this video for me is like really highlighting why people love louis so much not just looking at his career and accomplishments but like why do people love this man because he is known like one of his things factually is like having a great relationship with his fandom and just like having the best fans ever and it's because he really cares about them and he goes out of his way to show that he cares about them in a way that extends so beyond the regular like oh this is a parasocial relationship no louis cares about his fans he really does he is always active online like coming online to do q a's and have the most casual chats with fans who are like online and engaging with him and i just think it's great that he goes out of his way to come online and answer questions and keep up to date with what people are doing and being like hey how are you guys this is what i'm doing and his whole career he's given fans opportunities to see him that's so important to him he's always going out back even if it's freezing cold outside you know what i mean even if he's tired as fuck like he is going outside to meet fans he also listens to fans when fans make suggestions to him about his merch or like cities that he's going to like little details like that he always responds on twitter like getting on this right now talking to my management right now or like 
someone will complain about something and the next day it's fixed. Like Louis always listens to fans and like actually makes changes that make them happy. He's always involving fans, doing interactive things like in his career for them. He did those two of us hotspots. I don't think I talked about it, but those two of us hotspots that he did, the kill my mind thing where he would have different bits of the chorus like going out to fans and you had to put it together to make the chorus like just such cool interactive things for fans to like keep connected to him and do things he's so wildly supportive of the lgbtq plus community which is like a humongous reason why people love louis so much and i can't make a video talking about louis without talking about the humongous chunk of his fan base that is lgbtq plus as early as the one direction days there's stories coming out on tumblr of him asking people for their pronouns and respecting things like that he was the first member of One Direction to ever speak up on acceptance of gay fans in general. He would sign like CDs and pride flags with things unprovoked like be proud. Obviously his shows have seas and seas of pride flags and he's always clapping at them, giving them thumbs up, smiling at them. He was very comforting and supportive to queer X Factor contestants, congratulating them, supporting them, um, acknowledging this one girl who had queer lyrics in her song and making sure that she felt heard on that. Also again, stories coming out about him on Tumblr being very supportive of trans fans and asking them and conversating with them about their transitions. Just mm, all the things, okay? One of you guys said, Louis is just everything good wrapped up into one. He's a great artist, a great mentor, friend, brother. He's so supportive. He gives visibility to small artists. He gives back, demands change. He makes an effort to make fans feel heard and appreciated. I think there's nobody like Louis and the people who support him are really lucky to have him in their lives in whatever way it means to them. <laughs> Like, it's just crazy how someone so shot down and doubted can persevere and make this beautiful career for himself with these crazy supportive, passionate fans that just love him to death. But regardless of that, I still think he deserves even more and even bigger and even better. I think that's the point of this video. Like, let's look at this amazing career and then explore why he still deserves better. I feel like his fans are still the ones who are constantly putting in the work to get him promoted and to get him out there and doing literally everything for his team. They have paid for advertisements, created billboards for him. They do cool streaming events and games online to like boost his streaming numbers. They start hashtags, spread all the awareness. Also print his songs on QR codes or like make him little flyers and go around their city like posting them so that people in the public can see. Louis's team doesn't put a ton of effort into getting him promoted and they've been called out for this like literally every day of their lives. Even though for example like TikToks about him have tripled in numbers over the past year, they had numerous opportunities to push his name out there with his documentary All Those Voices and didn't really. Would They wouldn't even drop a trailer unless we got a hashtag trending which was crazy. Even like with his music festival they could be doing so much stuff with that and getting him out there and getting more people to attend and they don't. He had a song on Faith in the Future called written all over your face that was really really popular and started going around tiktok for a little bit and they did nothing with that when it could have been a huge thing they could have made it a single like all this stuff all this stuff i could go on and on but he is doing big things and he deserves the effort back he deserves effort if louis had a team that really saw his success and career and made the moves to push him out his impact would be crazier than it is and that's with fans doing everything i think a lot of people would love louis music and don't even realize it because of how he's marketed and the lack of mainstream promo i want those fans to have an opportunity to be fans of his this is quite the video for me to try and wrap up Wow. I've been dying to talk about Louis's career and his impact on fans forever, so I really hope that I did the topic justice. Please let me know in the comments all your thoughts on Louis's career and your favorite parts of it. Let me know what you're most excited for him to do next and why you think that he deserves better. If you have a friend who's on the verge of becoming a Louis, send them this video. I'm gonna title this video, send this to your friend who's almost a Louis. Send this to your friend who you want to be a Louis. Thank you guys so much for watching and thank you everyone who participated in this video and gave me quotes. Don't forget to check down in the description for my social medias. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me on TikTok. I've been making TikToks like crazy. I hope you're all doing absolutely amazing, drinking all the water, thriving, and I will see you in my next video. Mm -hmm.